Hi everyone, James Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my god, you guys, welcome to November! Whoa. And I want to make this a November to remember, so I have a lot of fun stuff planned this month. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but first things first, I took advantage of a sale that happened at Bellamy Hair. Yes, yes, yes. They had a Halloween sale where they're selling a bunch of their wigs for like 30 bucks. And I snatched up a bunch of them, so expect to see a lot from them in the next couple episodes. Anyways, this is one of the things I got. Now, one of the downsides of this is I got it for a very cheap price, but that is exactly what you got. You got a wig and a bag, and that was it. Normally, they give you like a brush, a wig stand, a beautiful little shoe box, display your wig in. None of that, girl. They said, here's a bag. Do what you want with it. So, this is our wig, and we got a card. <laughs> this is the wig. It is blue with roots. I was so excited because it is so long, and I know whenever the style is long, I can do a whole lot with it because there's so much hair. What the hell is this thing called? Porsche. Body wave synthetic hair, 30 inches. Okay, that's great. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, take that off. This is the wig and it is gorgeous. Okay, well, I am going to try this on. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, this is the wig. Oh my goodness. Now, I tried this on, I thought it was a middle part, so I'm sitting here like adjusting it, like what the f and, No, it's a side part. It's a solid side part they put into this with ventilation. I have to say she is a bit on the shiny side, but pastel synthetic wigs will do that. They have a bit of a shine to them. You can dull that with a dry shampoo if you wanna do that. And I've learned to appreciate synthetic hair over these years. I have to say, there's only so much synthetic hair can do, and people put a lot of expectations on it. <laughs> My God, you wouldn't believe the things you hear about synthetic hair. And I honestly think you can do a whole lot with it for the price point you're getting it for, honestly. Some folks have human hair dreams with a synthetic hair budget and they just need to come to terms with themselves. <laughs> this is a very, very long wig. and I probably wore the wrong dress for this wig. <laughs> a sequin dress was probably asking for trouble, but you know what? I'm a risk taker on this channel. That is what I am. And that is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna transform this wig into something fabulous. I just don't know what yet, but we'll find out, okay? Be right back. <laughs> well, come back, I clipped the tag. <laughs> now it's time to start styling. And I know what you're wondering, James, what the hell is that dog of a wig on your head? Well, fun story, I was scouring eBay for vintage wigs and I found this one for $10. Yes, it was already styled and it's from a brand called Paula Young. I've never heard of them, but it's definitely something either from the 70s or 80s, judging from the hairstyle. It's very like, like Marcy Darcy from Married with Children. <laughs> it's so heinous, but I'm in love with it. I can't help it. It is the most hideous wig I own at this point. And that's saying something because I have some of Sylvia Nix's old wigs. Anyways, right now I'm just separating some hair for bangs. I wanna do like little teeny tiny bangs. I was actually watching like a skit someone was doing and the girl was wearing a wig. And they were doing a little trick that a lot of wig makers do to help hide the fact that it's a lace front. They pull down little bangs that they can cut so it like gives a nice little softness to the face. I'm gonna do that today. So I'm just gonna take those and section those out right now. Nice little bangs. People also do this with baby hairs, but the old, old school way is to do it with little teeny tiny bangs, like a small little fringe to help soften up the edges. And if you want more bangs, you can always just cut more later, but this is what we're gonna start with for now. So those are gonna be separated. I'm going to start the crown of the head. I'm actually gonna keep this part here. What I have in mind today is I was actually kind of inspired by the wig I'm wearing. This is kind of like an old, like if you watch Country Music Awards back in the 80s, all the old singers from the 60s when they like wheeled them back out in their wheelchairs to sing their old hits, they always wore like these little wigs that are like these little nice golden girls wigs <laughs> with like big sparkly sequin gowns. So that's what I'm kind of referencing today. So I wanna make some big old 70s, late 70s, early 80s Country Music Awards hair. And what I like about that is like you can take any curly wig and do it because most of the wigs were curled pretty nondescript back in those days. It was either like a classic wave that they went over the top with or a modern wave trying to look classic. I'm just gonna start off with a tease to give us a starting point and work from there. And try not to get any of the hair from your bang section. And I'm really close to my microphone right now so you're probably getting some good ASMR action right now. Listen to me, take that knot out of the wig. Love that, don't you? Okay, don't you? Right, let's tease that down. 
All right, we got a good little section going. Let's keep going. Starting with the front, and then I'll work my way around to the back. And with bangs that have like a rooted section, like here it has like an ombre black root. What I like to do is I start really here at the bottom where the roots are and tease those down first and then kind of work it lightly as I get to the colorful part of the hair. That way you don't get too many like splotches in your teasing because it's going to show in the final result when you start to smooth it out. You'll have like a weird like, you know, Dalmatian spot happening in the wig. And now let's softly work the colorful section. I'm gonna tease the rest of this and I'll be right back. Oh, I'm already tired. <laughs> all right, I am back. We are all teased out. Now it's time to start our style out. Yes. Now I'm just gonna go through with my brush and try and get this section cleared. Oh yeah, so this teased out really well, I have to say. The pastel colors have really been on my side lately. Well, except for that Katy Perry one, but we made it work. We made it work. You can always rely upon that. That or I'm just getting better at what I'm doing. <laughs> Someone commented the, on the other video saying basically like James when she first started, I don't know if I can do this. James now, watch me transform this wig into something amazing. And I'm just like, girl, I really hope that's the energy I'm exuding right now because I honestly don't even be thinking about it. I just kind of get lost styling the hair and talking. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Okay, that is gorgeous. All right, it's already starting to smooth out great. All right, I'm not even gonna f around with it. We're just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna pin her down temporarily so I can get her out of the way and work on a different section. Now, I wanna get as much volume as possible in this section right here. I'm just gonna keep brushing over that top layer and try my best to make it look smooth in the front. What do we got here? Oh, actually, let's see what we got here. All right, so I got this whole section right here. What can we do with it? That's a lot of hair. Okay, well, we can do something really fun and crazy with this. Let's do like waterfall curl or something. Yeah, what is this side doing? Oh, yeah, that's happening. Okay, let's try to encourage that. Let's get some volume in this. And teasing the way I did, where I took very big caution on this area right here on this dark section, it actually is making for a very supportive base. So if I want to do something crazy and high, it can handle it because there's a nice strong base. It's like a human pyramid with cheerleading. I wouldn't know that I wasn't successful at cheerleading, but that's what I imagine. I try and measure it by if I can put my whole hand there and cover it, the hair like goes higher than it. That's so you know you got a good wig going. And some of you might be thinking, well, why don't we just double stack it? I could do that, but I only have the one blue wig. Okay, that is looking big. Okay, but what does the back look? <laughs> the back is a blast site. Okay, let's work on that right now. <laughs> Good Lord, James. I guess that's the benefit of teasing and double stacking. You can cover up this whole section. Oh boy, okay, well, let's see if we can softly cover that up. How do we soften you up some? Ugh, when I see big hair like this, it's always Southern. I get like the ideas from, like I always see like those kind of references, like country singers or like even televangelists. They always had big old hair like this, like Jan Crouch or I don't really like Jan Crouch that much, but um, Tammy Faye. Oh my God, Tammy Faye Baker. So much makeup and so much hair. It was incredible. Actually, about Tammy Faye Baker. Let's have a moment for Tammy Faye Baker. What a saint was she? Oh my God. One of the very first televangelists to have an AIDS patient on her television show. And she actually was not afraid to touch them. And she was very like knowledgeable and asked the right questions and gave a platform for gay people who were suffering from AIDS during the AIDS crisis to vocalize what they were going through. And she cried, she held their hand, and she didn't quite understand everything, but she made the effort to try and, you know, bridge the gap there and learn a little something more, which I wish a lot more people did. Oh, actually, speaking of Tammy Faye Baker, I don't know why this moment always stuck out to me so much, but I remember that television show, The Surreal Life, back in the early 2000s, she was on the second season of that. And I remember watching that as a teenager, and there is this one moment where she's at a book signing, right? 
And everyone in the house is kind of like, they've kind of been dogging Tammy this whole time. Like, yeah, whatever, you know, Tammy Faye Baker, you know, she was embroiled in scandal and she was ripping people off with her husband, blah, 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 blah. Everything that the media told you. But I didn't realize just how involved in the gay community she was after that whole scandal happened. Like they basically brought her back and took her in when she had nowhere to go. And she was making this speech about how, you know, a life in hard times is sort of like having a dead body on your back. She was basically making a reference to back in the olden days, when you killed somebody, you'd have a body strapped to your back and eventually that dead body's weight would weigh you down and kill you. And that was like your punishment. And she was using that as a metaphor for basically saying like, you had to discard, you know, the body off your back and let go of the people in your life that bring you down. And I don't know why, but that always stuck with me. And it's so crazy to think that like, something so impactful came out of such like a nonsense show, like The Surreal Life. It was like basically like the lowest, the low as far as like television goes. But the right people involved can actually say something that has a lot of impact. I don't know, I always thought that was such a great little statement she made. I think it's on YouTube, you can probably look it up. But it was just incredible seeing this really diverse crowd of like drag queens and gay men and women, and all sorts of people just in the audience to see Tammy Faye Baker. Whew, all right. Right now we're just playing the smoothing game. So I'm gonna smooth it a little bit more and come back with some more talking. Yep, I'll be right <laughs> back. All right, I am back. Now I am going to smooth this back and work it back and do like a French twist because she ain't sitting right when I just have her down. So I'm gonna pull this back and try not to interfere too much with the section here. And let's pin her down and we'll just start to fold over and under with all the hair. There, that's pin. This one might be a considerable amount of work. Whew, okay, she's looking cute so far. Now let's try and get some style going into her. Give her some flair. <laughs> Okay, I am back. I got done smoothing and doing my best to get some structure out of this hair. I think she needs a haircut like desperately. It is so long and I know the second I put it on, this dress is gonna eat it. So let's just start trimming it some. Let's see, snip, 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 snip. Oh, I should probably raise it up so you can see. <laughs> there we go. Okay, oh, this is ridiculous. Okay, snip, 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 snip. Snip, 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 snip. Oh yeah, much better, much better. <laughs> okay, let's just brush out our bottom so we don't have a messy bottom. No one likes a messy bottom. Oh, this is actually perfect for me. I actually can brush through this now and reach it at eye level. Love that. Why didn't you think of that before? Okay, here I go, styling her making her look beautiful. I don't know, whenever I do country hairstyles, I just, I can't help but think of like, just country singers. <laughs> or even like just country folk. Like one of my favorite country folk is Jessica Simpson. And girl, she's one that loved her some hair. I think she actually has a line of like hair extensions. I never tried them, but I mean, if she has a line of wigs or something, let me know, I will definitely transform them. Or maybe I can make a wig out of her hair extensions. That's a plan. Oh my God, that is what we're doing. I don't know what it is. I always think of like, you ever watch that show Driven on VH1 back in the day? Okay, so they would have these things called Driven where just like mini documentaries on pop stars. And Jessica Simpson's always made me crack up because like every single time it was her basically getting overshadowed by Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera at every turn. <laughs> Any big opportunity that came her way, these girls were cutting her off at the pass. <laughs> Like, it even, like, I remember she had that audition for the Mickey Mouse Club and they were talking about how she was so prepared and so excited to do it and then suddenly she had to get on stage after Christina Aguilera had performed and completely like shut down. And then it just didn't stop there. Like when she was about to release her pop album, they were about to drop something from Britney Spears and then another girl came along named Christina Aguilera and then there was Jessica Simpson with her weird mashup of John Mellencamp and pop music. It was a weird time. The 90s were a weird time. Anyways, <laughs> I think she won in the end. She got Nick Lachey for a while. I think he's with that girl from TRL now. 
I don't know where it is. I hope like somebody saved this in the archives. I remember back in the day on TRL, Vanessa, his current wife, she was a VJ on there. And she had mentioned after I think like his song, This I Swear, she's like, Nick, if you ever leave Jessica, I'm right here. And I was just like, oh my God, she's had designs on him since he was married to Jessica Simpson. <laughs> and you know what? She got her man. They are still married to this day. But don't sleep on Miss Jessica Simpson, girl. She's got a billion dollar business. She's got all that Macy's money. She's like, who needs Nick Lachey, girl? I got a shoe line. Now the shoes could be desired. I used to work at Macy's Shoes in the, like, the Christmas season. <laughs> and they had her and Talia as the celebrity brands. And they weren't the cutest. They were not the cutest. Not my taste, at least. But somebody out there was buying them because the girl's got billions of dollars. And to Leah, I just found out she's married to Tommy Mottola now. You know, Mariah Carey's ex-husband? The, like, crazy one that had cars fall on her and stuff? Allegedly. Allegedly. Ah! Read Mariah's book. It's fascinating. Boy, I'm just a pop culture dumpster today. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Why don't I work for VH1? I could be on Best Week Ever. Now, there's a reference. We're getting somewhere. I got the bottom looking cute now. Another thing I love about synthetic hair, you can heat it into submission if you want. <laughs> I say, you will go where I want you to. And if you have a blow dryer and enough hairspray, it will. All right, now we just got to add a little, actually, it's almost pretty much there. Gonna take our bang and trim her some. Get out of there. Damn it, okay. Fantastic. Now I'm gonna try this wig on and play around with it. <laughs> Drop my comb. <laughs> I'm gonna try this wig on and play around with it on my head and I'll be right back with our final result. Be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the final result. Oh, so glamorous. I have to say working with this Bellamy hair was a bit of a challenge. When I got around to doing the bangs, I realized I might have cut too little hair for it. It was like bad baby hairs. So I decided to screw it and just brush it up into the wig and did a little spit curl. <laughs> Other than that, I feel like the hair teased down really easily and pinned up exactly where I wanted. I did my own curl pattern with it. We could have done a lot more crazier stuff with this. I have to say, I really am spoiled with double stacks. I'm, I'm kicking myself I didn't buy a wig that matches this because with a double stack girl, it could be even bigger. Hmm. I wonder if there's still $30 on that site. Anyways, we'll find out later. This wig is fabulous, but it is just missing one more thing. The James Mansfield Magical Wig Spray from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Let's just give this wig a spritz. Ah, now my hair smells just like cream soda. Available at blackphoenixalchemylab.com. And grooming can be an absolute drag, but thankfully I have Manscaped. Use my code JAMES20 or Mansfield for 20% off plus free shipping. Just because it's November doesn't mean you have to participate in No Shave November. Girl, we're all locked in our houses. Don't get smelly, smelly body hair. Unless you're into that sort of thing. And stay tuned for November. I have to say, you guys have been so awesome lately with my videos and the great comments. I am having a blast reading them. We have some more fun stuff planned for this month. I just had to get my glamour itch scratched this episode. <laughs> Now that I've got that out of my system, we have a lot more plans, so stay tuned and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet. Anyways, I'd like to take a moment, a Ven moment, where I thank everyone who's tipped me on Venmo. I would like to thank Oscar, Edward, Angel, Jennifer, James, Sean, Nicholas, James, again, good lord, you love me. Julie, Christopher, and Lee. Thank you all so much for the tips on Venmo. Oh my God. <laughs> now don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. Click here and watch you transform Party City wigs or watch you transform spooky Katy Perry wigs. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll drop nickels in your Thanksgiving mashed potatoes. So click it.